thinking about starting your business and it's finally time okay but now i just want to make sure that you know as much as you need to know or just enough to actually get started. So starting off, I decided for us to actually talk about perfectionism. I, for one, am not a perfectionist, okay? I am okay with starting, like, really hard. In other words, things are just not adding up yet, but then I still get started. I'm the type of person I will grow and make it better and change it as time goes on. But I'm okay with however it's going to start. But here's something I do know, though, and I've actually had these like these conversations with people. Um, I know a lot of aspiring entrepreneurs who are still aspiring entrepreneurs because of the fact that they want their business idea to be this perfect idea. They want to figure everything out before they get started. Something I can tell you if you're a perfectionist, you can only, not even perfect it, you can only get something to be good or to be better by actually doing it. Here's the thing, if you have this now perfect idea that you took very long to come up with, watch how that idea is gonna crumble because things change. You realize that the people that you thought were going to be your target audience are not really. You realize that things didn't actually go the way you thought they would. You were doing really well at the start and then things just plateaued. So it's, it's going to change. Your idea is going to change. The way you do things is going to change. And if you're striving for perfection, you're striving for the wrong thing. Strive to get started. Have an idea of what you want to do and get started. Something that you should know about me. When I started, I wanted to start a jewelry brand. That's how I started. But had I not started, I would not have gotten to where I am right now. As much as like I started the wrong way, because obviously I'm not a jewelry business owner right now. I am a marketing coach. I have a service-based business now. So as you can see, that, that shift <laughs> was a big one. But it took me starting that jewelry brand or thinking that I was going to start the jewelry brand in order for me to be where I am right now. So if you are a perfectionist, yeah, you can't perfect anything without actually starting. As much as they are perfectionists, they are people who overwork themselves until they burn out and only after they've burnt out do they actually take a break. I am people. Yes, I do that. I've done that for so long. I plan to change that, okay? I will, I will give you an update when I finally changed it. But I do that, okay? So, something that I've seen, you end up going into a slump. And when you're in a slump, it is so hard to do anything. The best thing that you can do is to actually plan your breaks. This is what I'm going to be implementing, okay? I'm giving you some secrets. Okay, is it a secret? I'm giving you some tips, okay, that I'm going to be implementing as from 2023. Okay, so plan your breaks. Figure out how many times in a month you're actually going to take a break. A break means you do not do anything. It does not mean you're going to go on a vacation and be working on your phone. That's not a vacation, okay? A break means you are not doing any work. You are not meeting with any clients. You are not marketing your business, okay? You're not doing any of that. You're not creating content. You can consume content if you want, if you're like me. But you are just resting, whatever resting looks like to you. And that includes not reading those business books, okay? I know damn well that's not resting. Don't do that, okay? Find some other books to read. Please, to avoid actually burning yourself out, please make sure that you're actually planning your breaks, that you are taking those breaks. You're sticking to the plan that you actually make. Something else that kind of forced me to not take breaks was the fact that I couldn't see, or rather I wouldn't give myself credit for the things that I used to do. So... Another thing that I'm implementing is actually getting a gratitude journal. So I'm going to write down the things that I have achieved. This is a way for me to actually convince myself that I'm doing something, okay? Because I always feel like whatever I do is not enough. And it's only after someone has actually had a conversation with me. And they're like, oh my word, I love everything that, you, uh, that you're doing. I've been seeing you, you know, you're doing this, you're doing that. That's when I realize I'm actually being very, very hard on myself. And that's something that I've been doing. So... Getting a gratitude journal for me is something that's very, 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 very important. The third thing that I want us to discuss is fear of change. Did I not struggle when I was transitioning from a jewelry brand to a coaching business? It was hard. Like, I knew I'd gotten to a point where I knew that, honestly, the jewelry brand was out of it. Like, I was not starting a jewelry brand. I was not interested in it. It just, it, I wasn't interested in it. I thought I was, but honestly, I wasn't. And then now I knew what business I had to now start. I knew what I actually wanted to do. But did I allow myself to do it? No, I was like, no, actually, 
I need to stick with what I started, okay? I can't just, like, change. What if people realize that I changed? Because the thing is, with me, I started with marketing my business before I even had any inventory. I did not have anything on hand. I did not have anything. I was literally figuring it out as I go. And I was documenting the whole thing on TikTok. I now grown an audience. And I told this audience that I am going to be selling jewelry. So, imagine the shock when now I have to come back and be like, Oh, no, it's actually um, a coaching business. Yeah, I'm going to be helping you with your marketing and can you see that okay i was freaking out about that but guess what everyone was so happy about that like everyone really wanted me to help them with their businesses you know uh marketing they didn't because the thing is i was already talking about that it took a really long time it really took me so long to allow myself to actually change like allow myself to come up like you know go back to a drawing board and come up with a different idea oh please don't be afraid to change if you clearly know that you need to change your business idea you need to change what you're doing please do so because you might end up realizing that that change is going to make you a lot more money than what you were planning on doing before so please do not be afraid of change now that we've spoken about fear of change let's actually talk about the issue that i see a lot of business owners only realizing once they're in it so even i i also realized when i was already in it um by in it i mean in entrepreneurship you expect that when you're starting your business you're going to have so much support you know everyone is going to be supporting you not that you won't because to some extent you are going to have people who are going to support you but i feel like it's not the it's not the support that you expect so let's just put something out there the vision that god gave you for your business this life that God has shown you that you can achieve, that you can attain, he didn't show anyone else. You were the only one that got that vision. You were the only one that saw this dream. So please don't expect other people to understand. Don't expect other people to, you know, to, to be as hyped about it as you are because it's not their dream. I feel like when you when you realize this it makes it so much easier because you stop expecting people to support you that doesn't mean that you need to turn a blind eye to people who are willing to support you allow people to support you who want to support you and who you can trust to support you but those who aren't willing to support you don't expect them to and i know it's hard to get to a point where you can accept this but the fact that you actually don't get support from your friends and family at times does feed into your imposter syndrome Okay, so imposter syndrome is feeling like you're not qualified to be doing a certain thing or to be in a certain place, whatever it is in your instance. So with me, my biggest worry, to be honest, was the fact that this is self-taught. Everything that I teach you guys is something that I learned on my own, something that I am implementing on my own. So there was that issue of, but then I don't have the qualifications for this. It is true that you are your worst enemy. Something that I really struggled with was understanding that you can still do something even though you're not qualified to be doing it. I don't have a degree in marketing. I do not have a diploma in marketing, whatever it is. I do not have a certificate in marketing. I taught myself everything that I know I did this through YouTube University through books through you know um, online courses to some extent I was worried that people wouldn't be willing to work with me because of the fact that I taught myself I did not I do not have the qualifications to be doing this until I found out that people genuinely don't care people don't care about the qualifications that you have they care about whether or not you can get them the results that you're promising them this video i told you guys about what it takes or what you need to know about starting a business firstly we spoke about perfectionism the fact that it can actually hinder you from getting started if you're an aspiring entrepreneur secondly exactly you can make sure that you do not burn yourself out thirdly we spoke about fear of change the fact that you need to be willing to accept when change is inevitable and we spoke about the fact that your family and friends do not need to support you they are not obligated to support you so please do not expect them to support you and lastly we spoke about imposter syndrome this needs a whole video on its own honestly but we spoke about imposter syndrome and how exactly to actually deal with it once i know that you are still an aspiring entrepreneur or a very new business owner and you must probably still have your full-time job or you're still studying let's actually talk about whether or not you should just quit everything and focus on your business i have a video that you need to watch if you've been thinking about this so, I'll see you there.